Ford sold a ton of 4.6 two valve modular Ford motors. I'm going to show you guys how to make more power. In this video, I got a cool series of upgrades for the 4.6 liter two valve PI motor. We're going to install shorty headers, then long tube headers, then boost from a Ford Racing Supercharger, then a bigger throttle body, then a pulley to increase the boost, then camshafts. Let's check it out. Now this was a really cool series of tests. I like running these kinds of tests where we can go step by step and add one part at a time and show what the differences are. This is on a 4.6 liter two valve. And so obviously we needed a test motor and rather than get one from the wrecking yard like I normally do, this one actually came from the guys at Sean Highland and belonged to the guys at Westec. So this was a 4.6 liter two valve PI motor and it was basically stock. The only thing it had on it was Ford's pistons and unfortunately they lowered the static compression ratio down below 9 to 1 so it was 8.8 .8 or 8.9 depending on how you get how you calculate it but it was less than stock compression which means it's going to start out making a little bit less power but we were going to run boost and nitrous and all kinds of things on this so we weren't really that concerned with it we like the fact that it had a forged piston in it because that's we didn't obviously didn't want to break that so it had stock uh non-ported just you know basically ASCAS 4.6 liter two valve pi heads that had stock cams in it you know, everything was basically stock. And this came as a long block without the intake manifold. We already had a PI intake and everything. So what I wanted to do is start out with this basic motor and run it in stock trim and then show some minor modifications. And then we're going to get into boost as well. So we'll start out with our stock trim motor. What we did was put stock cast the stock exhaust manifolds on it and two and a half inch exhaust. We put the stock PI intake manifold and the stock throttle body on it. We ran it with a fast XFI management system. And obviously we dialed in the air fuel and timing to get this thing right. I think we had 36 pound injectors in this thing at the time. Run in stock trim with the stock exhaust manifolds. Our 4.6 liter two valve produced 288 horsepower and 334 foot-pounds of torque. So our first modification was actually to try a set of shorty headers that Ford Racing sells. So we installed these shorty headers in place of the factory exhaust manifolds. So that's going to be... And as you can see, there was almost no change in power from the shorty headers. And that's not really surprising given the fact that this motor wasn't making very much power, so it didn't have a lot of exhaust flow. So the exhaust manifolds were not very restrictive. The shorty headers obviously were um, less weight than a set of cast iron manifolds, but they just didn't offer any flow gains really because you know we weren't making enough power. But that changed when we installed a set of long tube headers from Cooks. So here are the long tube headers from Cooks. And as you can see, the long tube headers picked up power everywhere. And this is normally what we see with a good set of long tube headers because the long tube headers add scavenging even down at the bottom and the top. This it really isn't a flow thing like the difference between the shorty headers and the long tube headers. This is more of a scavenging effect, kind of a supercharging effect in the same way that runner length does, but it does this in reverse. So long tube headers pick up power basically everywhere in the curve, as you can see here. And the gains were... Let's see, 305 to 318, so 13 foot-pounds down there and 10 or 12 horsepower. So it was a good gain from the headers, and probably we could pick up even more if we did this header test after we had installed cams and things like that. But just know right off the bat, long tube headers on a 462 valve are a good idea. So now let's take a look and see what happened after we started adding boost to the equation. After running the exhaust modifications on our 4.6 liter two valve, it was time to step up to some boost. And normally we would run a turbo or a twin screw or a centrifugal blower. But what we did for this one was Ford Racing at the time had a dedicated blower kit for the 4.6 liter two valve. And since we wanted to try some Ford Racing stuff, we installed the supercharger kit. Now the supercharger centered around an M90 Eaton supercharger. And this was a non-intercooled version and the blower um, sat below the intake manifold basically in the valley of the 4.6 liter and then the uh, intake runners came up above that so it did have some intake runner length which was good but it was non-intercooled so obviously ultimately that's going to kind of limit uh, power production but since we were running an M90 with that kit anyway the blower kind of ultimately would limit peak power as well so what we did was put this supercharger kit on our 4.6 liter two valve from Sean Highland and we ran it with the factory <clears throat> factory two valve throttle body 
and we ran with the as delivered pulley supplied with the kit. Here's what happened when we put our supercharger on. Run with the supercharger, the power output jumped to 383 horsepower. The supercharger provided a peak boost of 6.8 PSI, but actually, and especially at the top, the boost level kind of leveled off to four and a half to five pounds. So it wasn't making a lot of boost, which is good. As I said, it was a non-intercooled version and it was an M90 supercharger. So there's only so much the supercharger could do. But what we did after that was to install a new throttle body. We figured that the stock throttle body might be restrictive. And since the air into the blower is going to help determine the power output and the boost supplied by the blower that comes out, we want to install a bigger throttle body. So we put a 75 millimeter throttle body on here. Here's our throttle body upgrade. As you can see, it did pick up power and the boost went up slightly as well which is kind of what we would see when we increase the airflow into the blower. We also increase the airflow out of the blower. So the boost went up, the power went up with the throttle body upgrade. The peak power jumped from 383 horsepower up to 394 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 402 foot pounds so now we officially <laughs> crossed the 400 foot pound mark so it was doing well but now let's take a look and see what happened when we made some other changes to our supercharger after the installation of our larger throttle body on the Ford Racing Supercharger, we decided to do what everybody else does, and obviously that's turn up the boost. So we replaced the uh, factory, there were the supplied 3.6 inch blower pulley with a 3.4 inch blower, blower pulley. Spinning the blower faster relative to the engine speed means you're producing <laughs> more air, putting more air into the motor, more boost, more air, more power. Pretty simple deal. So what we did was replace the pulley on it run this thing again here's what happened when we increased the blower speed and increased the boost we did see a gain in power the peak power jumped up to 407 horsepower as you can see torque was up quite a bit as well too up to 417 foot pounds the problem is while the peak boost rose from 6.8 to about 8.8 .8 pounds it still fell off at the top because that little M90 supercharger, we're just having trouble <laughs> supplying enough airflow to our combination. It's not really sized for this. In actuality, this blower kit from Ford Racing was designed to basically add 100 horsepower to an otherwise stock 4.6 liter PI motor. And it did that very well, but it's not designed to do the kind of things that we're doing. So as you try to go up and up in power, you start getting diminishing returns because you're fighting the supercharger itself. What you really need to do now is you need to pay a little bit more attention to the inlet side of the blower, maybe port the blower, port the discharge side, you know, really kind of get into it if you're trying to get all that you can out of that particular supercharger size. The ideal thing, obviously, is just <laughs> to put a different blower on it, put a Kenny Bell twin screw or a TVS or something else on it with an intercooler, and yeah, then you can really kind of get after it. But we did not stop here. Uh, after putting the uh, change in pulley on there, we decided what this thing needed was to replace the stock cams supplied with that Sean Highland short block. So what we did was it replaced the camshaft with a set of a comp uh, Extreme Energy 262 cams. And we also made sure that when we installed the cams that we optimized the cam timing. And by that I mean a lot of times when you put these two valve cams on, the cam timing will be off right to left. So we made sure to dial the cams in so that the cams were the same on each side because you'd be surprised. I did a lot of stories on this back in the day where we <laughs> checked the cam timing from the factory motors and they could be off by eight or nine degrees from one side to the other. So obviously that's not ideal when the two sides of the sil of the V8 are making different power because of the different cam timing. But here's what happened when we put the Extreme Energy 262 cams on it. The power jumped up quite a bit. The boost dropped, which is exactly what we would expect when you increase the power output and the efficiency of the motor. The boost actually comes down because the supercharger is trying to supply the same amount of air. We're using more of it. The boost comes down. It's all a big natural thing. So what happened was we pushed the power up to 436 horsepower and the peak torque checked in at 428 foot-pounds of torque. So again, 
jumps everywhere. And the thing that I liked about this cam swap, I like these mild cams on the 4.6 that are two valve. The 262 cams work very well. And as you'll notice, even down here at 2,500 RPM, we didn't lose any torque compared to the stock cam. So all we did was run the same torque there up to about 3200 RPM, and then we just saw power gains everywhere. Now, the only thing holding this combination back now, obviously, is that little M90 supercharger. If this were a turbo or a twin screw or a centrifugal or something, we would be making a lot more power. But I just wanted to show you guys what happens when you make these incremental change on a 4.6 liter two valve. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about the modifications on our 4.6 liter two valve Ford motor? Shorty headers, not that much. Long tube headers, definitely yes. Applying a supercharger, always good. More boost, even better. Bigger throttle body, that usually works. Pulleys, definitely yes. And camshafts, almost always work. But here's the thing, you can apply this to lots of different motors, not just this one. All of those things work on other motors. So feel free to apply it. <laughs> I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. I'm trying to get this video in before they make more noise behind me. I'll keep testing.